really happy with the team's effort. Obviously, you know, another night where we've got a lot of different faces out there, a lot of different lineups, a lot of young players playing together. Um, and I thought, you know, to come out of the game with six people in double figures, um, you know, the ball was moving. A lot of different people contributed. Um, you know, they shot the ball great from three. I think in the first half, um, you know, we had a lack of urgency on some closeouts. I think in particular, you know, a couple of the threes that DeAndre Hunter got kind of like catch, jab, three. Um, you know, those are situations where we just got to have more urgency closing out. It happened to Taylor in the first half. It happened to Micah in the second half. Um, you know, DeJounte Murray got hot late. Um, you know, I think overall we did a pretty good job on him, you know, for him to turn in 33 points but on 27 shots. Um, you know, I thought the, the guys were, were pretty engaged defensively on Murray. Um, but I think that I'm just happy with the way the team is showing some resilience, um, not complaining, not making excuses, playing with a lot of different lineups. Um, you know, we're, our communications being tested very much in those moments because we've got people in spots that never been in, lineups out there that never played together. Um, and so really happy to come away with the win. Well, you, you talked about a lot of different people contributing, having a lot of new faces, having to work together tonight. I mean, that was obviously very apparent in the third quarter where um, George and Sensaba combined for like 20 points to mm -hmm. give you guys a boost on offense. But then towards the end of that quarter and then the start of the fourth, Micah Potter and Johnny Juicing took over and mm -hmm. really gave you guys a boost. I mean, what does it say kind of about their development that they were able to step into that kind of role? Yeah, I think, you know, with the first two guys, Keontae and Bryce, they exude a lot of confidence in themselves. Um, they're for sure not scared of the moment. Um, they have the utmost belief in their ability. Those two are developing a pretty good communication on the court. I think they understand kind of how to pick their spots. I think Keontae's doing a good job of running the team. Um, and Bryce is showing a knack for kind of getting to his his spots, his little pull-ups, the mini fadeaway he shot, um, and showing some great touch. The, the second two, Johnny and Micah, you know, that's the product of a year and a half of really hard work and staying ready, um, although they haven't gotten a ton of opportunity. These guys have played a lot of minutes in the G League. Um, they've done everything and more in terms of what we've asked them to do. Um, they're both good basketball players. I mean, Micah is solid as a rock, understands the game plan, good shooter, good rebounder, physical, tough. Johnny, obviously, tonight got to show his offensive skill set. He's worked really hard on his catch and shoot three ball. Um, but I think tonight you even saw a couple of drives to the rim. He had that great finish in the second half um, going to his right away from our bench. Um, and so those two guys, I think it's really just proof that staying ready um, is the only option when you're not getting minutes because at some point opportunity is going to come your way and you want to be ready. And um, I'm really happy for those two guys because we see the work they put in every day. Like it's not a shock to their teammates. It's not a shock to our coaching staff, but you guys and more importantly, our fans don't get to see what those guys do every day. And so to have them come out in a game and produce and help us win um, is big for them. Playing the spots is one of the hardest things to kind of do offensively in the NBA. And it looks like Keontae is able to, to do that. How's he been able to kind of get to that point off the dribble so quickly in his career? Playing the, what was the first part? Playing two spots. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, Keontae, his game is continuing to grow. We've talked a lot. I've probably talked too much about his three ball because it's been a real emphasis for him. But I think tonight we saw a lot of dynamic drives to the rim. We saw the burst of athleticism that he has. We saw the finishing that he's working really hard on. Um, you know, I think for him to score 25 points and make one three, 
that wasn't really the recipe um, coming into tonight. That's not something we'd seen a lot from him. We'd seen his big scoring nights be nights that he's hitting five plus threes. And so tonight's just a, a glimpse into what Keontae's future can be. Um, he's got to keep working, though. Like, this is an every-night league, and Keontae loves basketball. He works really hard on his game. Um, and I think finding different ways each night to impact the game and not being so reliant on one thing is what gives Keontae the opportunity to become a real star in this league. How would you feel about Taylor coming off an injury tonight? How would you feel about his I mean, he looked a little rusty on the offensive end, um, which is not surprising at all based on being out for a little bit. But I think his effort defensively was great. You know, 10 rebounds in 19 and a half minutes is, is a positive sign for me that he's continuing to play hard and use his athleticism. Um, but the most important thing is that as of right now, he got through tonight healthy and he'll be able to play tomorrow. How important? Sorry, to go ahead. Thinking of kind of Keontae as maybe a potential future star in the league, like he's been your number one guy for the last few games. Does that experience help kind of guide him towards that, kind of being the number one usage guy rather than kind of the fourth or fifth starter, what he was earlier in the year? Yeah, absolutely. I think there it's twofold. One, the actual just basketball piece of producing um, and having a lot of opportunity and the fatigue that starts to wear on you like the best players in the league take a beating every night because um, it's not as easy as they make it look. Um, the second piece is the mental part of there's a lot of pressure when you're the number one guy. Like you're driving to the gym and you're thinking if I don't play well we won't win. Um, role players don't always necessarily have that burden in their brain before a game and so um, these opportunities for Keontae to be the quote-unquote number one guy for us are imperative for his development. How important are wins at this point in the season to keep everybody engaged? It's for sure more fun than losing. Um, and it's it, it does keep everyone engaged. Like, we talk about development and we play a lot of young players and we're trying to coach them every day on the things they need to improve on. It's very important that you find opportunities to win games because then it starts to show you that the hard work is paying off there is a there's a beat down you know mentally and emotionally that comes with losing a bunch of games in a row um, because I think there's not very many people um, in general that have any perspective on um, like the context of a situation it's wins and losses, and if you win, you're great, and if you lose, you're awful. And I think the people in this room, I think the people, you know, in our organization that follow it closely and are actually thinking, can recognize moments of, you know, what's the per what's the context here? You know, what type of perspective do we need to have on the big picture? Hey, we're playing a bunch of young guys, but our world in general doesn't have that, and these guys take a beating. Um, it's not necessarily fair, but it comes with the territory. And so I think opportunities to win and show everybody that the work's paying off and that you are capable of winning is really important. And that final defensive possession you subbed Taylor back in. I know he'd had foul trouble before that, but mm -hmm. is that a decision that's like, I want to do this for him so that he knows that I trust him in this moment? Or is that like, I just want the best defensive guys out there? It's both. Um, you know, his length really helps us defensively. He's a good defensive player. He's showing that his activity is very impactful. But, you know, sort of along the lines of Ben's question of like winning, it's like playing in a close game and being in that moment and being on the court at the end on a one possession game. I can't simulate that in practice. I, I can talk about it all I want. We can set up as many situations in our practice gym as we want, but it doesn't feel the same. And so um, any opportunity we have like that to to put him in that situation, we're going to try to take it. Sorry to look, sorry to look at tomorrow, but thoughts on Mike returning tomorrow? Just, I mean, what he meant to you in your time you guys had that first year? Yeah, Mike's a, um, Mike's a special human being. I leaned on him a lot last year, not only in the games, but um, in between the games, away from the game. Um, Mike and I are the same age. 
similar kind of situations in life. But, um, you know, being a head coach for the first time is a lot. And, you know, Mike, his temperament, his how calm he is every day um, was really helpful for me because I knew I could really rely on him. I almost didn't have to think about Mike very much. He for sure helped me more than I helped him. Um, so, yeah, he's a he's a special person, special player to me, to our organization. I know our fan base loves Mike. Um, so, yeah, he's a he's a good one.